Welcome to the Easy Answer Podcast. I'm Brandy, plant-based chef. And I'm Von Anise, plant-based adjacent. On this podcast, we explore thought-provoking conversations around food and simple ways to stay healthy in this crazy world. Hey, Von. Hey, Brandy. How you doing? I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm really good. Cool. So today's episode is going to be about picky eaters, especially as we uh, head into September, which is the what? The back to school month. So we're going to have a series all about kids and food and bring on all kinds of guests about that topic. And um, were you a picky eater growing up, Vaughn? I wasn't really a picky eater. I just ate whatever my mom put in front of me. Okay. However, my sister, she was a picky eater, mm. one of my sisters. And it just so happens that her, like she wouldn't eat onions, green peppers, nothing. Mm-hmm. The only thing I don't eat is eggplant, as I have shared with you all <laughs> on numerous occasions. <laughs> because it made me sick once. I got sick from like eggplant parmesan because I ate everything that my mother ate. My mother used to call when we would eat. After she, when she ate something and then we wanted something, she would say, baby birds, baby birds. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was doing my baby bird thing and I got sick. And so I've never touched eggplant after that. Oh my goodness. That sounds funny. And my sister, she didn't eat that much stuff. So she never touched eggplant, period. And now mm-hmm. she has children who are picky eaters. It's very interesting. Yeah. I wasn't a picky eater either. I was particular about things like, um, if something smelled bad, I wouldn't eat it. Like I was home one day and my grandma was making, well, not home, I came home one day. My grandma was making chitlins and I was like, what is that smell? And my grandma was like, throughout the whole oh, house. <laughs> she was like, she was like, that's dinner. I said, like, I'm not eating that. Like that is <laughs> so like, I was picky in that way. Like if stuff smelled weird, I wouldn't necessarily, or even looked weird. So like I never had, I never had pickled pig feet because I'd always seen it in the pot afterwards with like the gelatinous like um, mixture of the vinegar and the fat that came off of it, like kind of sticking to the to the foot and falling off. And I was like, I don't want to eat like that. Just doesn't look good. <laughs> but you were a scrapple girl. Let's be clear. Yes, I was a scrapple girl. See, that was good. And my grandma would fry it. And my mom, my mother, my mother, my mother she ever made scrapple. My grandma used to make scrapple and fry it up real hard. And it was like we didn't question gray meat, right? It was just like it was good. You have it with some bread, with some bread. Well, well, <laughs> but it was so good. There's a place in Philadelphia that makes vegan scrapple. Like oh. that's where the trip to Philly. And I haven't like, unfortunately, when I was there, like I think they were closed on Monday, so I didn't get a chance to taste it. Like I was leaving on like Monday or something. I was like, oh, that sucks. But yeah, totally worth the trip. I would like to explore that. Do you have um? So like, yeah, yeah. I had a cousin who was a picky eater, like super picky. Um, would only eat McDonald's pancakes, like. Like pancakes, no other pancakes. So like what Wait, no, only, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner or no other yeah. Oh, like no, as far as pancakes were concerned. And we had an aunt <laughs> who literally these pancakes were like McDonald's pancakes. My aunt Marceline used to make these pancakes that were like McDonald's. So we were like, they taste just he like, no, mm-mm, I only eat them from McDonald's. He wouldn't even try them because that was just like what he knew. And fried chicken, he would only eat the crispy. Now, what is the crispy? It's the crust from the chicken. So, like the chicken crust, crust. You mean like the skin, the <laughs> like the crunchy skin, or like the flour fried flour crunchiness. He would eat that. That's like the most unhealthy <laughs> part of the chicken. He wouldn't eat the chicken though. <laughs> he only eats like crispy chicken. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. back when KFC had like. You know, like crispy chicken. My mother, when we were younger, and she uh-huh. wouldn't, she didn't want to cook. She would come home with a bucket of like crispy chicken for us. <laughs> That's the, the theory exists that that's you know, uh-huh. whatever it is. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. The, the, yeah, that was the only way though. Like the original recipe from KFC wasn't good. It was always kind of soft. And who wants soft fried chicken? But it was delicious though. Hmm. I was always because this. I don't know. I like the. I wasn't really into the soft one. I like the crispy one. Even they had this that little sandwich called the chicken little. Did you guys have that up here? 
I think so, yeah. Okay, because it was like a southern thing. It wasn't always available in every store, but it was like a little fried chicken on like a biscuit. And it was like so yummy. I still remember, but I only like the crunchy. But also, that's like the McRib. You know, it's not available all the time and people get so excited when it is. But yes. I've never been a huge fan of the McRib. Yeah, I don't even think I've ever eaten it. I remember when I went to Germany, there was a girl in the group who, like, I wanted to go to McDonald's because we were in Germany. Like, oh, what's McDonald's in Germany? Because I heard they sell beer, and I thought it was kind of cool to be like, oh, let's go to yeah. McDonald's. And I didn't all the guys, they offer mayonnaise instead of ketchup. Yeah. You have to ask for ketchup. You have to ask for it. Yeah. I don't want to eat McDonald's. I just wanted to see what the McDonald's was like. That was just kind of like, I'm, like, I'm not going to Germany to eat McDonald's. It's not going to happen. Um, and this girl was like, beer, sauerkraut, <laughs> and, and sausages. <laughs> the good old, what was that? The, the gyros, the, 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 the turkey gyros. Yes, Turkish gyros. Yes. <laughs> so good. <laughs> um, there was a girl in our study group who like was like, oh my God, they got the McRib. And like, we're like, we didn't come here to eat. We literally just came here to say we like stopped by the McDonald's in Germany, but she ended up like always the whole time we were there wanted to like go to McDonald's to get the McRib. It was what? I mean, are we judging people because they choose to eat? Like, they're like, but we didn't come here to eat. Let her eat it. <laughs> like, you came there. It's better than someone at least gets to eat it, you know? <laughs> like, oh, no. Just yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, you are. we're in another country. Can we just, like, eat their food? I don't know. <laughs> Everyone has to decide what's right for them. But mm -hmm. I think that, you know, when it comes to picky eaters, they say that a child's like their taste buds aren't as developed as ours, so they can't eat as much as we can, you know? And so that's when the chicken nuggets and the mac and cheese and all of these things come into play. Like recently I went to IHOP with my sister and they had craft mac and cheese on the menu. And my sister was like, yes, I'm really excited about this because only thing my son wants is mac and cheese. And they were smart enough to put craft mac and cheese on the menu. But to someone like you, you're like, they're doing nothing. That's no work, <laughs> you know? I hope they charge like $3 a plate. Like, there's no way I'm saying no, it was like, I was like, oh my gosh, the markup. It was like $9 or well, something. craft mac and cheese restaurant, like the prices they're getting at bulk, it probably spending like 40 cents a serving and they're charging $9. Okay. And that's capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> that's also marketing and i'll tell you why i do not believe that kids like craft mac and cheese i don't believe that kids are like chicken nuggets i believe children eat what we give them because i'm sure in countries unlike america they're not feeding their kids chicken nuggets and craft mac and cheese right and and they're okay. Like we're raising kids that are cool eating real food from a young age. So I think that's more marketing than anything. Well, I would have said that if I didn't know. One of my nephews has autism, so marketing doesn't work on him. You understand? So he marketing autism. doesn't. But what, what's presented to him is a form of marketing, right? No, we present to him like we present to him with like this um, this Costco pizza, right? It had a kale crust and all this other stuff. It's like pizza, 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 and he wanted all that. So we gave, we gave, we give him that all the time. But then when he gets done with it, he doesn't want any more. You understand? He eats only what he likes. If he's done with it, he's like, I don't want that. You know? Mm -hmm. So marketing for him, it does not work. Like he he eats what he sees. You know, us eating, he'll try it, but he's like, mm -hmm. and then also. It's the texture of things that, you know, because he has autism. So mm -hmm. the texture matters and all that. Yeah. No, and I totally understand and understand that point of view. I just think that if you consider things like texture, like, because I think that's important in general, and I'm assuming with a child with autism for sure, but it doesn't have to be what we necessarily believe that it is. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't know any kid that's going to turn down a French fry, Right. But at the same time, if you gave him a roasted potato, I think they would eat that as well. No, he yeah. eats the French fries. <laughs> 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 he, 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 he presented with roasted potatoes and turned them down. He just, yeah, like we'll have, I, we'll have both. We'll have one day we'll have this, we'll have that, and 
he'll and you're thinking, oh, this is going to be really delicious. He's really going to want this, you know? And be like, mm, no, mm, no, and we like, we're like, really, like, we go out of our way to try new things. Like, oh my god, they're going to love this, and he's like, no, ravioli, ravioli, ravioli. <laughs> That's funny. Well, guys, what we're going to do is uh, we'll bring in our guest for today, who is a mom who is on a mission not to raise a picky eater. Her name is Scarlett, and she's going to tell us um, how she does it and give us some of her secrets. So I'll have to bring Scarlett into the show. Hey, Scarlett. Hey. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's hot, humid, tired. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Welcome to the Easy Answer Podcast. So tell us a little bit about yourself. So my name is Scarlett Sanchez. Um, I, my daughter is 15 months to be annoying if you want to get into the months, but she's technically just one year old. Um, she's one of these pandemic babies, so she's a little bit more adventurous than most. <laughs> but, but yeah, that's that's my gist, more or less. Got it, got it, got it. Oh, so, I'm a baker. I, oh, baker. yeah, I forgot about what, that. What kind of things do you bake? I, I'm i more interested in like patisserie than I am in like cakes. Cakes kind of stress me out mm -hmm. because they're just so massive and so you they have to be so perfect with the smooth sides, and that is highly stressful. So I like little tiny desserts, <laughs> yes, <laughs> or I make a lot of butt cakes, you know. Like, Easy. I love those are nice. <laughs> uh, I see uh, Sophie's making a. <laughs> you thought is making an entrance. I'm in sorry, area. I'm gonna have to <laughs> change the background because she is dramatic entrance. <laughs> <laughs> we love children. No. Don't worry. <laughs> they keep they keep life interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> cool. Does so you what? Bake your daughter? Huh? Do you bake for her? No, because I limit sugar. Okay, so what do you make for her? I typically I try and di be as diverse as I can with the foods. I'm Dominican, um, and you guys were talking about picky eaters. I was a very picky eater as a kid. I was a hundred percent like McDonald's. My dad had to peel my grapes. I wouldn't eat it if it had. To yes, yes. Oh my goodness! He had to peel my grapes. I was. <laughs> I was like, no. I remember being in like a bodega one time, like handing it to him, like, Papi, uh uh. <laughs> 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 That's a whole nother level of spoil. They made fun of me because my mother used to cut off the corn for me. But peeling grapes, that's, ooh, <laughs> you got me. <laughs> uh, like apples, I wouldn't eat them with the skin on. Like, very, like things that you wouldn't think <laughs> deal were a big deal to me. I still, I don't eat ketchup or mayonnaise. Um, I have a, like, I have a textural thing. Like sometimes when they're, it's too creamy and like, oil, I don't know, the emulsification can get to me. I'm like, I don't think I like this. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you get along with my nephew. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't eat tomatoes until I was 18. I would only eat tomatoes and like pizza. Mm -hmm. Super, super picky. Um, so that kind of inspired me to like, I was like, I can't. So I was like, I can't have her be like this. I'm not gonna be peeling grapes. <laughs> <laughs> You're like that. That that habit stopped with my generation. Yeah. Yes. I have. Come here, sweetie. Then. But... Yeah, I we have... just want to see you. <laughs> I have... Yes. I have nephews who are the same. Like we would be in a family event, and everyone would be eating what was cooked, and. Someone had to go out and get the McDonald's because they refused to eat anything else. Wow. Um, I always was just so annoyed. I was like, oh my God. I was like, I would let you starve if I was your parent. <laughs> like... Oh my goodness. So when you so when you decided to um, I guess break the picky eating gene um out of Sophie, like what was your what was your strategy? What was how did you start? When I started solids with her, I was generally pretty lost because my parents obviously raised the picky eater. So I kind of wasn't taking the advice from them. I didn't really want to listen to them. Um, but I knew that I wanted to see her try as much as she could, obviously like safely prepare. Um, and I just did my research and I started Googling like kids, like kids will eat what you give them. 
kids will eat what you're used to. Their, their palate, our palate is inclined towards sweet stuff normally. Mm -hmm. But typically, like, if I, Sophia eats octopus, Sophia eats sardines, things that, like adults have issues with. Mm -hmm. um, and it's because I've just always given it to her. She knows nothing else. If you only serve broccoli at the table and you don't start with sweet potato, your kid's gonna love broccoli because that's what their palate is being primed for. So if you did the research, you figured that out. And so now when you're eating something, do you all automatically know that it's some, like you make some for her or how do you do it? I usually just cook one meal in my house. I give her what I, um, with modifications, like not as salty. Um, if it's spicy, like just no spice, I go add spice later. Um, but I just modify everything. There's typical. I honestly started cooking more because I knew I didn't want to give her highly processed foods. I didn't want to do the chicken nuggets and the fries and like frozen craft mac and cheese or something. Um, and I'm naturally like a person that doesn't, <laughs> that won't cook for myself. I'll eat like a salad if I have to, or like after the pandemic and the pregnancy, I just got kind of lazy with cooking. So having to make food for her was really a chance for me to experiment and like make it fun. Cause I won't do it if it's not fun. If I felt like I had to cook as a chore, I would not be happy. Like I wouldn't do it. Um, okay. no, because that's that's kind of challenging. <laughs> moms find themselves making like three meals and you're like, never happening. I'm not doing it. I'm not a short order cook. That's not happening. I will make, what I do is I make something different for breakfast. But what is for lunch is usually for dinner. I might change a side dish. Um, but the main, like the protein or whatever the bulk of the meal is, will stay the same. Because mm -hmm. I can't, I used to do like three meals and I was like, this isn't happening. I was like, I don't even eat three meals a day. <laughs> but see, my sister, my nephews were her age when they ate everything. And then as they got older is when the they got a little bit more picky. Some people say that does happen. I I follow this really great page on Instagram. She has a, she kind of started like a, a solid starts is what it's called. She started because her kid um, is extremely picky, like severe, was severely underweight, had a bunch of allergies, like really dangerously um, picky. Um, and I really do believe that like, I think if I gave in, if I serve Sophia broccoli and she threw it on the floor and I go and prepare something else, then I'm the one that's at fault. If I prepare something that like I know she will eat, do you know what I mean? Yes. Like, I don't, I won't give in. I won't let her starve, obviously. It's good to have something on the plate that you know she will eat. Um, but if she throws the broccoli on the plate, I'm not gonna prepare a completely different dinner for her. Yeah. He's going to eat what the family eats. Yeah. Did you see that Kraft mac and cheese commercial where she's chasing her daughter around and she goes, one more bite, one more bite. <laughs> yeah. So has there been anything that uh, Sophia has been resistant to that you've given her food wise? Like I know you said that she eats octopus and um, something else that most adults Sorry. eat. Yeah. Sardines. She pretty, she loves chickpeas. She'll pretty much eat anything. She hates beets. Um, I, I tried so hard yeah, yeah, yeah. right i don't know if i was forcing it but i was like it's so good for you sophia i tried to roast it i did it into like a mash she hated it every single time I <laughs> Let's go. okay i wanted to try to trick her and i chopped up like oranges with the beets and like i like cubed it and stuff and she took the oranges and literally took the beets and just flicked them <laughs> <laughs> Like, like, I'm not playing these games with you, mommy. <laughs> Look how cute she is. <laughs> it is very funny. I love it. <laughs> cool. So what's a what's a tip that you would give to to a mom who is is struggling um with a with a picky eater? I think to stay strong. Like it's hard when you're a kid, because I've had friends who have gone through it stay strong and like know that it's a phase and it'll go through it's best to it's better when you catch it young because once they're older and they're very very like you know how, how like toddlers and five-year-olds can be they're like uh, no no way and they throw their fits and their tantrums so if you can catch it young i think it's honestly what's best 
start with foods like there is no such thing as baby food baby food is people food it's what we eat it's humans mm -hmm. they're they're literally just bait little humans if it's prepared correctly there's no reason they shouldn't be able to eat what you eat mm -hmm. Bap. Bap. that's right girl. <laughs> <laughs> goes with that message she's like yes wow <laughs> right how cute you are. <laughs> hi. We said hi too, little cutie. I used I've loosened up on some things. I used to be very just like only organic, like all these things. And I still try as much as I can. But if my dad offers her like broccoli or cauliflower and she wants to take it from him if it's not organic, I won't I'm not gonna say no, it still has nutrients. Mm -hmm. Um like I'm not gonna drive myself insane over that. <laughs> Yes. But if it's McDonald's, you, you liable to fight your cousin in the streets. Yes. <laughs> I, will, I got I will oh my <laughs> because at some point you have to say to yourself, my sister is like, I can't fight with him about this. Like I need to get these nutrients in him. Yeah. And I need to, you know, I need him to he needs to know, eat. <laughs> And I need them to be yeah. more verbal because the big thing is that they need to be more verbal. They need to speak up. He was like, so if he's speaking up and if he's telling me what he wants, I'm going to give him what he wants. Yeah. He of course, of course. There are definitely times like I don't I don't want to make it sound like I'm a complete like hard ass because there's definitely a time where you should give in. If your baby's sick, like if you know that there's something that like if having him be more verbal is the top priority. Yes. Then like give in. If he says he wants Whatever it is, he says he feels comfortable. girl. He wants beefaroni, beefaroni, beefaroni. I would slap that beefaroni on the plate and be like, you're happy? We're good? <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> okay, bye. A lot of moms say that they feel like people judge them if they don't, you know, make yeah. like the organic baby food and all that. Have you felt some judgment? I think my family did judge me when I said that I wasn't going to do purees. Like, so the way I started solid with her was I did do a couple purees um, because I was just confused about how to introduce meat or like some like mushrooms, like something that's tough to chew on when she didn't have teeth. Um, and when I started serving her like whole foods, they were very like, what are you doing? Like, that's not baby food. Like get like a Gerber thing or like make it yourself and very judgmental about things like that. But after they saw that she, like, she was capable of like handling it, they kind of backed off and they didn't force it anymore. Um, I think, I think it's a sensitive topic when it comes to like how, how a mother decides to feed her child, where you're, you're talking about breastfeeding or formula feeding um purees versus like baby led weaning which is like a craze right now organic versus non-organic i think at the end of the day whatever decision you feel comfortable with is what's best for you and your baby i can't sit here and tell somebody that like baby led weaning is better than purees or like breast milk is better you know yeah you know, whatever you whatever works for you and your kid is what's best i guess there are yes. things that I might not agree with that I wouldn't do personally, but I don't want people to feel shamed if they do it. A lot of things that like, a lot of things like I've seen people give, they're like three months old, like cereal, three months old, like rice cereal with their like formula mixed in. And that's like not safe. Like if you're doing something that's unsafe for your child, then yes, I'm going to judge you. <laughs> um, but, I don't know. But I agree with you. You know, everyone has ideas until it's their child. And so I was there, my sister was like, um, he wants beefaroni and he said beefaroni and we're trying to get him to be more verbal. He's getting beefaroni. And yeah. I was like, oh, beefaroni. It's like, who am I? I don't have children. You know, <laughs> like. I also like, for each family, like everyone has different priorities. Some people's priority is just getting them as many nutrients as they can. So that's why they like purees because you can condense everything in such a tiny amount. You can blend all the veggies, all the proteins, everything. And they feel like they're getting more nutrients that way. But um, I guess to each their own, I do think that a lot of like the poor, like maybe giving your baby McDonald's at eight months is not 
a smart decision, I'll say. Um, <laughs> Because we want to raise healthy, happy eaters. Definitely. You want them to be comfortable with like all food types and everything. And when you and palate, which may be the palate you have, like there's things that maybe Sophia will eat that I wouldn't eat. That doesn't mean that I won't give them to her. That she should, she doesn't have a right to try them just because I don't like them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which like I hate eats. I tried to give it to her. She also hates them. So <laughs> I think especially with going back to school, you know, meal prep, meal prep is key and keeping it simple. It doesn't have to be like a three course meal every single time. Like the most important thing is like using whole foods, whether it's organic or non-organic, like you want to get good, like nutrient dense veggies. And if you're doing meat, you want to get like meat in that, like in good portions, like give them what they need. Yeah, you know, regardless of how you get, regardless if it's grass fed or organic or whatever labels on it, get the whole food into them, get them accustomed to understanding like this is an apple versus applesauce because then that's the only way that they ingest it. Yes, um, and on that note, because you just you know summed it up perfectly. Brandy, we are going to, you know, wrap up this episode. Uh, before we do it, Scarlett, tell us how we could um, follow you or journey with uh, Sophia on Instagram. Oh, so it's Sophia's with an F um, uh -huh. underscore food journey. Sophia's food journey. Oh, that's so cool. Yes, Sweet. yes. I'm trying. Cool. I share like little tips and. You know, I'm really so lucky that Sophia is this way because I'm I, like I said, I'm ex I was extremely picky. And it wasn't until I like started exploring on my own that I was like, okay, maybe a tomato isn't so bad. Like, <laughs> like maybe it's not the most disgusting thing on this planet. Because <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> cool. Thank you so much, Scarlett, for sharing and coming and joining us on the yes, ECS yes, podcast. I'm a rock star. That's the rock star. Bye. 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 <laughs> Thank you guys for having me. I yes, it this. <laughs> cool. Take care. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. So that was. Um, Scarlett, who shared with us her journey with her daughter, who kept making appearances throughout the episode, um, to let us know that she is real. Um, and uh, we kids, and we love when girls express themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you haven't already signed up, guys, we uh, kicked off our dairy free challenge. We're a weekend now, and um, if you haven't signed up yet. You can still sign up and join us. It is 30 days dairy free. So if you are interested in figuring out ways to kick your dairy habit, or maybe you're trying to find some ways to help your child eat less dairy, um, be sure to sign up for our dairy free challenge and get some tips and some support from other people interested in doing the same things. So join our community on Facebook, right? Yes, on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, guys. So thanks again for tuning into the Easy Answer podcast where we have thought-provoking conversations around food and help you to find simple ways to stay healthy in this crazy world. Until next time, be easy. Mm -hmm.